Hello and welcome to our brief presentation on the importance of reading together with children ages pre-k through second grade. My name is Lauren Lark. I'm the proud early childhood teacher specialist at Deerfield Elementary School. I support teachers and students in grades pre-k through second grade. Some goals for our session today is we will explore all the pieces of the balanced literacy approach so that families can, and providers can understand how reading can be supported at home. We're also going to share some ideas for how parents can support reading at home. First, I'd like to take a moment just to acknowledge how complex reading really is. So I have for you an article. This article this article is about a dog, and you can see the dog on the stairs. Her name is Millie, M-E-L-I. So I just want you to take a minute, go ahead and look at the bottom of this, and can you read that text? So would it help you to maybe read this text if I told you that this first word is look? Maybe by knowing that this first word is look, the second word is at, and the third word is the dog's name, Melly, M-E-L-I. Now, do you think you could maybe read the rest of this text? Still pretty tricky, huh? Well, that's what students and children that are beginning to read do when they're decoding, when they're trying to solve words. These symbols are symbols to us, but to a young child, symbols and letters can look very familiar and they're trying to put those those symbols or those letters together to read words. Now I want you to go ahead and I'm going to pull up this next article here called the flanker article. I bet you could easily read these words. Go ahead and take a moment and read this article. This article is much easier for us to read. I definitely know what the words are, but I have no idea what this article is saying. Unless you're proficient at rugby, which I know I'm not, you probably would not be able to tell what this article meant. Maybe if you have a little bit of background knowledge about sports, you might be able to put some of those words together like four words and wing and you might be able to tr kind of figure out that it's about a sport using some of your your knowledge about sports but i still pretty much have no idea what this article is saying so thinking about these two articles and thinking about a child as a young reader we're asking this, we're asking them to do these things every time we're asking them to read. We're asking them to do both of these things. We're asking them to really look and decode words and figure out what those letters together make, the sounds, what word is it. But also we're asking them to kind of read the words and keep track of what the meaning is. And that makes reading very complex for young children. So what can I do as a provider or a parent to help my child with this complex understanding of reading? Balanced literacy is the approach where we take advantage of natural connections 
connections between reading and writing, speaking and listening. We're thinking about phonics and vocabulary along with comprehension. High volume of easy reading is used to practice these skills. And choice is huge. Choosing reading materials and having students pick materials that are of high interest to them will keep them motivated and keep encouraging them through this challenging task of reading. So why should we read aloud to children? There's a book that I highly recommend called Reading Magic. And this book is very parent and caregiver friendly. And it really breaks down for us the importance of reading aloud and making this such a meaningful experience for our children. So when we read aloud, we help build vocabulary for young children. We also can take opportunities within the stories that we're reading to talk about morals and values. It also helps to give us an entryway into tough topics, especially as your child grows older. It gives us that entryway to talk about some of these topics. Also, when we connect with characters, well-loved characters and stories, it encourages young children to build empathy towards other people that may be different or the same as them. Also, when we read aloud, we're modeling fluency, we're using expression, which is very difficult for young children when they're learning to read and decode as we as we practiced on the article about Melly, it would be very hard to read that and decode it and sound out those words. If we were beginning reading, it would be very hard for us to do that and do it fluently and with expression. So it's very important that children hear you reading with fluency and expression. Also, by cuddling up, reading together, picking favorite books and talking about those books, you're building a lifelong joy for reading with the children that are in your care. So what can I do? Before reading at home, ask questions. What do you think this story will be about? What do you notice on the front cover? Oh, this book is about, do you like? Have you ever? Asking questions and talking before you even start reading the book prepares the child to start to make connections about what the story may be about. As you're reading, remember the importance of modeling fluency and expression. Change your voice for the characters. Make it fun. If your child interjects with a question or an observation as a reading, Acknowledge that. Take the time to say, sure, that's just like when you, and give an example, a real life example. Also, ask lots of questions as you're reading. Like, what do you think will happen next? Ooh, how does that make you feel? Have you ever felt like this person? And then when you're done reading together, talk about the story. How did it make you feel? What were your thoughts on the story? Turn it in to something fun. Like, show me where the character was so angry. And then go back into the book and find that page. And say, yeah, they were so mad. Show me your mad face. And then at the end of the story, they weren't mad anymore. How are they feeling? So keep it fun as you talk about what happened in the story. This really helps to aid the comprehension of the story, which as we, sh as we saw when we started in the Flanker article, which was about rugby, it will help your children to wrap their mind about around what was really happening in the story as they may have been focused on other things. So, I did say that fluency is very important. So how can you model fluency with your children? 
read stories with rhyming words or predictable patterns. For example, a part of a text that repeats over and over again so that your children can chime in with you. Change your voice to match the character. Show facial expressions when the character changes emotions. And children love to reread favorite books over and over and over and over again. And this is a great way for them to develop fluency on their own because they can even start to read those stories. And even though they might not be reading the words, they may have had memorized them from the amount of times that you've read the story, but they could practice showing emotion and reading with fluency as you're reading together. Tracking print. Show children how you move your finger across the line of text in the story. Point out different types of punctuation as you're reading, exclamation points or question marks. And maybe sometimes in books, they'll have really big words that are intended for the reader to shout. Show them, point that out for them. This will help when they're reading on their own to understand how the size of the text or the bold print or the punctuation affects the way that the story is read. Who doesn't love to be read aloud? Make it enjoyable. Ask questions. Take the time. Taking the time will instill a joy of reading that your children can carry forever and ever. I would like to take the time right now to do a quick read aloud with you. And the story that I chose is a favorite, a, fa a favorite of children, young and even all the way up to second grade. They love this story. This story is called Bark George. And just like I said, what you could do is you could introduce the text, the author, and then you can ask like, oh, who do you think the character might be in the story? Hmm, I see a dog, could be a dog for sure. And why do you think it says Bark George? Hmm. That could mean the character's name is George. And I know that dogs bark. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen in the story. What do you think? So see, before I even started reading, really starting to think about the story. Bark George by Jules Pfeiffer. George's mother said, Bark George. George went, Meow. I might stop here and say, Do dogs say meow? And the kids always love to say, No. Cat say meow. No, George, said George's mother. Cats go meow. Dogs go arf. Now bark, George. And George went quack, quack. No, George, said George's mother. Ducks go quack, quack. Dogs go arf. Now bark, George. George went, oink. Oh my goodness, George has now made the sounds of a cat and a duck. And now, oink, oink, what sound is that? A pig, right. Hmm, what other animals do you think George might make sounds like? A cat, a duck. A pig. Oh my goodness, he a cow. Yeah, he might make mm -hmm, he might make the sounds of a cow. <clears throat> no, George said. George's mother. Pigs go oink. Dogs go arf. Now bark, George. And George went moo. 
George's mother took George to the vet. I will soon get to the bottom of this, said the vet. Please bark, George. Vet might be a vocabulary word that your children don't know. So you might point out to your children that a vet is like a doctor that takes care of animals. And it's actually called a veterinarian. And kids might get excited to try to say such a big word like veterinarian. And then you can say, yeah, and we say vet for short because veterinarian's a really big word. So then George went meow. What do you think's gonna happen? What do you think the vet's gonna say? Or do, look at this picture. Oh my goodness, what's happening? I would encourage children to make predictions at this point. The vet reached deep down inside of George and he pulled out a cat. Bark again, George. George went quack, quack. The vet reached deep, deep down inside of George and he pulled out a duck. Bark again, George. And George went oink. And the vet reached deep, deep down inside of George. And he pulled out a, what did he pull out? A pig. Bark again, George. And George went moo. Oh my goodness. Do you really think that the vet could pull a cow out of George? I don't know. We'll have to see. Bark again, George. And George went moo. The vet pulled his longest latex glove again. Latex might be a word that your children are not familiar with. So you might take a minute and talk about what latex is or even have them guess. Then he reached deep, 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 deep down inside of George. What do you think happened? And he pulled out a cow. Oh my goodness. Bark again, George. And George went, Arf! George's mother was so thrilled. Hmm, I wonder what thrilled means. Hmm, I wonder how she looked. How does she look? She was so, so thrilled that she kissed the vet. Oh my goodness. You're right. I think that means she's really, really happy. She must be very excited that the vet has fixed George's problem. And the cat and the duck and the pig and the cow. On the way home, she wanted to show George off to everyone on the street. So she said, bark, George. Now, that's not the end of the story, but you'll have to find out. It's called Bark, George, and the ending is so funny. It's not what you would expect because George's problem is not over. So I can just engage children by modeling fluency, expression, reading together is a way to build lifelong love for reading with your children. Make sure that you make it a part of your everyday routine with the children that are in your care. Thank you so much and happy reading.